Hey, welcome everyone back to Monroe Live, or specifically Ask Monroe. I'm Kevin Hardy, and I'm here with Antonio. And uh, we're gonna, we've got some questions about this kind of recent announcement with respect to the Magic Dock and the, the physical manifestation of Tesla charging uh, capabilities to non-Tesla vehicles. So it's, it's pretty interesting. We've kind of looked into it very briefly. We've seen videos of the installs over the last couple of weeks going on with Rivians and some other vehicles um, at some of these Tesla supercharging stations in California. And then, you know, very recently, I think like 11 hours or so ago, we saw people, you know, plugging in. Uh, Actually using it. A, a complete Ford Lightning and using it. So yes. um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, obviously, there's a, a new physical adapter that they're yes. interfacing on some of the um, limited amount of Tesla supercharging stations at this point. Yeah, but. so that's been the big thing. It's the uh, adapter wars like we had with the cell phones and the laptops back in the day. So we're getting that now with the electric vehicle charging. So uh, we have the J1772, we have the NACS, which is Amer um, North American Charging Standard used by Tesla. We have CCS, which is a combined charging standard. And there's one and two, one in North America, one in Europe. And then there's uh, the Chad Emo, which is used in Japan. So it's, it's a nightmare, but this is kind of a way of commonizing um, at least two of the chargers charging adapters for the most co widespread infrastructure network for charging in America. Um, so we have, this will be a um, NACS to seven or a CCS adapter going to the Ford, the Rivian, anyone else you know who uses it? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I am uh, <laughs> still in the stone age as far as fueling vehicles, but um, I think one of the things that we were talking about that's interesting is, and we were, you were talking, telling me about one of your experiences recently with Electrify, was it ChargePort or Electrify It was um, ChargePoint. So Charge Point. I went to my hometown, which is in the middle of nowhere, like 50 miles from the nearest city and 35 miles from the nearest supercharger. Um, and it was five below out. It had just iced over everything. And the um, ChargePoint, it was the only, adapt, only charger within several miles and it worked. It got me back here. But the... Um, the connectors so you could access the actual charger was frozen over. Right. I had to bash it with my adapter to get the ice to pry loose um, and actually get it to charge. But it took um, this experience for me to understand like how complicated the charging uh, infrastructure and connectivity actually is. Sure. Um, so yeah, there's not chargers everywhere. Right. And I think one of the, the advantages that we're, I think with, the Magic Dock setup and the Tesla in general is, is everything's on your phone primarily. There's no physical interface with any of this Tesla supercharging where you're not touching stuff into a screen or putting any inputs into it, really. You have all the data loaded into your phone. And then if, if you had a, a Lightning, you know, essentially you could put in that you had a Lightning, it's in this app. And then when you come up to a supercharger with the Magic Dock, or hopefully in the future, maybe you could just get your own adapter that they'll sell for um, charging stations that haven't been retrofitted. But it should pretty much drastically reduce the chance of you having an issue on either a Tesla supercharger station and maybe even vice versa going off the grid. You right, know, that's, the that's been my favorite thing of the Tesla chargers is because it is a completely phone-based app. There's no software interface, there's no user interface where if you could hit the wrong button or if the touch screen's not calibrated properly, you'd put in a different vehicle and you end up putting in the wrong charge parameters for your vehicle and actually causing it to brick itself. Um, or maybe it's like um, you've seen several videos where uh, people use another, I think it was like uh, EA or maybe it might have been a charge point, where they plug it in and like a couple minutes later they hear a loud pop and their vehicle's stuck there for seven hours because they can't disconnect it. Um, so we looked at the actual charging adapter. Um, this looks like it is a self-protecting yep. um, adapter. So one of the big things we were concerned about was are people going to walk away with the adapter? Um, and it looks like it's a software lock, so it's only going to unlock the actual uh, NACS, the CCS adapter, through your phone. It's going to be an electronic lock on the actual charging uh, stand. Um, and if you have a Tesla, it's just going to be the standard button, press, and release. So that's um, at least, I think, we think it's going to be a way that they're going to prevent people from walking away of the adapters, which is a concern. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I know that the number one complaint, even in the video that we watched with the, the lightning being charged, was, you know, 
people's concern over, essentially they bought into kind of the Teslas, the Tesla supercharging network experience, and now there's going to be essentially a series of vehicles and congestion concerns and things of that nature. Um, well, outside of California, I don't see there being too much of a problem where I've seen videos of lines that backed up for several hours or during uh, holidays or big travel events. But like in the rest of the country, if you're going to supercharging stations, I might be there by myself for 20 to 30 minutes with no one else. And maybe there's two or three others there and they're just sitting in there. But it's there, there is not a large congestion on an overall scale. It's just at local points where they're adding more and more stalls. So overall, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, the nice thing was the subscription service that they were talking about. For uh, you get, I think, pay twelve or so dollars a month, and you get the Tesla rate on the non-Tesla charging. Mm -hmm. So that's a small fee, and that's like maybe two charge cycles worth of extra costs. Right. Um, so if you're using it regularly, that's a... It's definitely worth it. Yeah. And obviously on the, the back end, you know, Tesla has this whole infrastructure, aside from building cars, the energy storage and things of that nature, which they can kind of help make money off of. Um, no, I mean, I drive on 280 all the time. They put a bunch of supercharging Tesla, uh, Tesla supercharged stations there, and most of them are, are not being used. A lot of it's still under construction, but um, I, I think it maybe it's some of this concern over the congestion is maybe a little bit more locally um, Right, it's derived. very, it's going to be specific areas for sure. Sure. So I think overall, I think we're pretty happy about it. It's going to be interesting to see um, whether or not other OEMs maybe will jump on board with the NACS style charge ports. Or, or they, they might just, with, you know, st double down on the CCS since they have the option now. True. Or hopefully, if nothing else, maybe you get the adapter. But um, it's, it's interesting. We were kind of talking, you know, I have a diesel truck and sometimes I could go to you know, the pumps are blocked, people are parking elsewhere, or I stumble upon a commercial pump and I can't even, I have to get an adapter out of my truck and do it. So I have similar experiences with, you know, fueling or, you know, my vehicle. So it's, um, I have a lot of sympathy for it, but I, I do think one of the nice things on the, the ice side of the house is you don't, you can go almost anywhere in the world and fuel a nice vehicle with gasoline. I don't know if this is the first step to essentially commonizing and getting a lot of the redundancies out, much of that's happened with USB-C and kind of cell phones. Yeah, it's something we've really become desensitized to with people standardizing charging and gas pumps. Um, I remember back in the days when you had, um, you bought maybe two different cell phones or three different cell phones in your house and you had three different chargers and you upgraded and you had a new charger, and then you try, like you need to use one at work, and then you have to go out and buy one because you don't have one. It was a nightmare scenario. You did have laptop chargers, right. and it's nice to have some standardization. I prefer they pick one, but that's, that's going to take governmental action to get that kind of uh, solidarity behind the action. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add about kind of the Magic Doc? It looks like a nifty little thing. The sure. way it's oriented is going to prevent that water ingress yes, issue. We'll well. um, it's hanging so that the um, it's protected by the stall itself, and the connector is it doesn't have an actual push button. It is the um, surface mount button, which I've had ice over here at work, but it's not going to be as bad as the physical plastic clips that freeze over, get what ice stuck in between them and um, just harden, become brittle, and pop off. I've seen a couple of them where they actually broke off at sure. certain stalls and you couldn't use them at all. Right. So Yeah, no, the orientation is something like immediately we kind of picked up on as far as it's yeah. interesting. So, But to kind of continue with the, I guess, the theme of charging, uh, we have, a, I think, like 10 or so yes. home chargers that we're going to be tearing down for Monroe Live. Uh, we're going to be starting with here. the uh, Tesla wall connector. We're just going to dive down into the electronics and the assembly and construction of it and see the pros and cons of 10 different chargers. Um, I've used the Tesla one, I have one at home. So we're gonna start with this one. It's at least from my understanding, one of the simplest designs and we can use that as a good compare and contrast point for the other ones going forward. Yeah, no, it'll be very interesting to see kind of inside and how much integration there is or isn't present, so. Um, anything else? That was a nice little Ask Monroe. Look forward to more of them. Yeah, and see what else is in store for Investor Day later, later this Ooh, afternoon. Yes. So maybe we'll see a new vehicle or not. So thanks again. We really, really appreciate you guys watching. And, uh, we take could care. have a new AI channel or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah.